Yeah, we can be right really walk out amongst them. Let's say Jeff, let's have a walk and talk. Yeah, okay. All right. We're going to walk through the street. Hey, what's up? Hello. 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 Do that for the full hour, that'd be good. Just while you're talking? Yeah. Interpretive dance.
Uh, hopefully, at least get one of those two mail. So, uh, you guys know Jeff? Obviously, Giant Bob fans. So, you know, we're going to get some What the hell? Well, it's going to be Everyone, welcome my best friend in the whole world, Jeff Gersman. Job there for a while, 
a lot of people kind of came out of the woodwork. Um, Penny Arcade, actually, we, we briefly talked, but it was so late in the process that I was, I was already kind of uh, committed, which, you know, I, uh, actually, I, I, I like the way we went with the thing. Um, and so there were a few people out there that I was talking to about different kinds of jobs, and a lot of them were like, we need to start a hardcore news site. Yeah. And I'm like, I can do that, but fuck, I don't want to fucking do that. <laughs> um, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's way less work to record a podcast and just like, I don't know, turn these cameras on, figure it out. Um, so we kind of went that route with it. The wiki was already in place with Comic Vine, so we were using the same tech that was powering Comic Vine, uh, ported to Django from whatever they were using, PHP or whatever they were using before, um, and got up and running really quickly that way. Um, and I really wanted to do a wiki because I thought that was super fascinating. It's one of those things like, you know, there's just that encyclopedia of game data out there that gets lost to time. So it was like my own little way of just like, well, maybe we can kind of preserve some stuff and it'll be really cool. Like some of the things we can call out with a wiki. Um, so, so that was kind of one of the really cool opportunities. And originally the homepage of the site was super wiki focused. It was basically a search bar. And then the editorial content was kind of below it. It was like, I don't know, we review Burnout Paradise and a handful of other games here and there. And, and you know, over time, the stuff that was popular was clearly like what we were doing. So we just kind of started yeah, yeah. shifting the homepage in that direction. What, what happened to the quest system? Yeah, that's a great question. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I actually would, I'm a dummy that would do those things. Yeah, no, totally. The page news we could milk out of is fantastic stuff. <laughs> uh, so you say that like if you're being sarcastic, but I bet it was pretty insidious and worked pretty good. Yeah, it's a page turn. So why we're uh, so the when we were purchased by CBS by uh, CBS. CBS. The oh, Tiffany gosh. Network, right? Is that I don't is that, 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 that Smart Farm in here right now? Yeah. So He's filming in the back. Oh yeah. Okay. Um when we were picked up by CBS, the the so the old company, Whiskey Media, split in two directions. Uh, the guys from Tested went off in one direction and they took anime vice of Scream with them. Um, but none of the people from Scream, right? uh, and there were no people on anime vice at the time. We, uh, Comic Vine and Giant Bomb went to CBS. Um, the company that bought uh, the other end of things, they were really interested in the tech. So they bought the tech that powered the site. So we came over with people and content but no rights to our own tech. So very quickly, the engineering team had to get together and be like, all right, we need to port this entire like, mess of data and, and site content all sorts of stuff to an entirely new setup. Go build this site from scratch again. Uh, and also, you can't look at any of the old code because you don't own it. It's a yeah. total white room. Like, no, you know, the code exists on one laptop that only one person can open up and glance at occasionally to fix things with Got the it. old site. Got it. So, so yeah, like we had to come in and like the engineering team had to just pull out this gargantuan effort to get the site up running as quickly as possible. So features got cut. Okay. And is it ever is it ever coming back? I, I want it to. It's something we still talk about, like quests um, and like achievement tracking are, are kind of the two things that are actually kind of difficult to build. Um, though it, I guess achievements have gotten easier, achievements and trophies, uh, because people have just cobbled together weird third-party APIs for that stuff. Um, and you can kind of get at that data in a way you, you used to have to be way shadier about. Um, so, like, I, I want to do it. So that's the website part. You also mentioned the video part. Like, uh, I was about to ask about Vinny. But actually, let's just bring Vinny on right now. Vinny yeah. Carabell. Yeah. I'm just fucking with this story. That's good. I can't throw it. That felt pretty good. Really went over there. How do we get hooked up with yeah, uh, So, uh, Vin is actually the person on staff that I probably knew the least like coming into anything. He started at GameSpot, I want to say like 2005, 2006, um, and uh, just kind of came on and, and took over a lot of the video duties. It's like, I, I, like, I only knew him, I never knew him from the GameSpot time. Right. Like from the giant bomb stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, because the, the video people there were very much behind the scenes, with, like the exception of Rich Gallup. And so when Rich took off, Benny took over a lot of the stuff. Rich Gallup of 38 Studios fame. Not familiar. He's Kurt Schilling's, like, weed guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, He's the guy that gets busted for him. Sure, sure. Anyway, yeah. Like Spliff Star and Buster Rhymes. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, so he kind of took over some of the stuff, the, the actual video editing work that, uh, that Rich Gallup was doing. 
Uh, whereas I took over kind of the hosting type stuff uh, that Rich was doing when he split. And, so uh, was it hard to get Vinny to jump over with you guys when you knew you wanted to do it? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the, 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 I mean, to be honest, like the, after the events of late 2007, the morale in game spot was pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it's kind of just like kick everyone they wanted and just like go, 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 go. No, I didn't poach anybody. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> No, we, they you know, quit, they quit, everyone quit, quit, and then I said, well, these free agents are available, sure. but if you want to do some of these people, yeah. maybe that would be interesting, I don't know. I think now that you, they own you again, they can't really yeah, do probably. shit. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So, but I, I mean, like, you know, that's a very difficult thing to have to tell, to like say, like, hey, I can't even give you a job offer, but if you weren't working where you were working, maybe we could chat yeah. for this much money. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, that's his, uh, because the head of our company was, Hypothetically. the head of our company was the founder of the company that had just fired me. So there's just like political weird shit all over it. Yeah. Uh, so, it, you know, Wait, he, was, you he was, yeah, he was the founder of CNET. Okay. Was the founder of Whiskey Media, and, and so he, you know, he kind of came in. He, he had the the money to yeah, yeah. let us, you know, fail for a while and figure our shit out. Okay. Um, and but yeah, but he was also still a really big shareholder. So until the CBS buyout happened, like everything was super weird. Yeah. Uh, because we were literally just building what he had built before in Sausalito at San Francisco. Yeah. It was really cool. So so when you do, like what was the once you do in your head like okay I actually do want to sell Giant Bond but give it back and get back like what was the first thought you had once you realized, okay, I want to do this, what were like the things you had to go through in your head? Well, so we had been looking for investors for a while. You know, there were a lot of different companies that were really interested, but no one wanted to be the first one through the door to set the valuation and actually like pony up the money. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be the second investor sure. in, in the company, I guess. Um, so they spent some time doing that. And, and you know, we didn't really have a dedicated ad person. We did for a while. We had one person who, I guess, he had he'd come out of game trailers and he did some stuff, but... Uh, you know, we, we didn't launch with the subscription stuff. We originally were just doing ads, and, and the ads weren't coming. Uh, and so it was one of those things where we were growing and growing and growing, but all, that also meant the expenses were growing and growing, and the business end of it wasn't shored up in a way that it needed to be. Uh, the premium subscriptions went a long way. Without that stuff, we wouldn't be here. Without, without you know, people signing up and subscribing, like, we would be gone. And even, that's true today. You, you know, even you know, CBS, like, the, our value is that we're able to do this thing that like people that do traditional internet business look at and just go like, what the fuck did you guys build? How does this even work? Like no one understands why this works, uh, which makes it really hard to explain to people, uh, but I've gotten a little bit better at it. I do remember when you guys announced the subscription thing the first time, that was a pretty, uh, there was a lot of backlash. Yeah. Did that scare the crap out of you, or were you still convinced it was the right thing to do? Uh, I mean, it was the right thing to do. Um, it, was, it was definitely the right thing to do. It was something that we felt good about. Like, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, well, you know, like we want to we want to do more. This is going to be the path for us to do more uh, if people want to do that. And if they don't sign up, fine. It, it wasn't a situation where I was like, well, fuck anybody if they didn't sign up. But, well, you know, let's see how it does, and, and we'll, be, we'll be serious about it. We felt good about the content, and we felt good about what we wanted to do with a subscription program. Um, so we felt like it was like, okay, this, this would be like a decent value for people. Like, you know, we think, we think this would be a cool thing. Cool. In the history of Giant Bomb, like, you know, from its inception, like, hey, I think it's going to be this all the way to now. Like, what's the one thing you were most wrong about? Like, about the vision for the company or something you thought would be cool or wasn't or whatever? We went through a few different phases where, um, like, we started out doing a lot of video, and then there was a moment that was like, you know, this, this thing needs to grow a little faster. So the guy who was like the busy guy, you know, he, he didn't necessarily come down and go, you got to do this, but he would say, you know, he'd say a lot of, well, none of the data would suggest that maybe we should look into this and kind of put it to me. And so for a while there, we actually, we were, uh, all of us were writing news for a brief period of time. Okay. Uh, even Vinny. Uh, we were just like, let's just, let's try to get 10 stories up on the side of the day and see if that moves the needle, like what that does. Uh, kind of an experiment. So... Yeah, he's um, actually written some reviews and stuff too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're, they're definitely, they're just games that he's just like the best person for. So yeah, yeah. In, in, in situations where he has time, uh, I, I love to, to get him to yeah, do yeah. some stuff in there. Um, but yeah, we, we did that for a while. And, and like I kind of knew like this is not going to be a differentiator. Like, the whole thing is like we're different from the other things that are out there. So like chasing, you know, at, at that time, you know, chasing kind of what, you know, everyone else was doing. I knew that wasn't going to get us very far. Uh, but we did it for a while, and, and I'm glad that we did it because it was one of those things where you, you come out of it knowing more about 
how that stuff works and then more about kind of just like, well, here's what that does to the numbers end of things, here's what that does to your time to produce longer video and stuff. But the thing is, you know, like we, we started out of the gate like out of necessity just recording longer video. Yeah. And people, I mean. I remember you saying the quick looks, it was really great because you didn't have to edit them. Right. It was just this long thing. You get, we had to put a lot of content up with little effort. Right? Exactly. That was, you know, because we were four people. In a and now that's and the entire internet is quick looks. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there were people doing like, you know, let's plays uh, before that on the internet, but like editorial sites, you know, I remember like, you know, people were in fear of the idea of putting up longer video because they thought, well, we're going to get sued or they're going to be mad and we're not going to send this to the game. And I was like, fuck it, whatever. Like, let's just do this. And, you know, like, we're not going to go ask for permission to, like, hey, can we? Yeah. Because if you go to someone and say, can we put up an hour of your game? And you're going to go, fuck no, especially because no one else was doing that. Yeah. Uh, so we just did. And then, you know, it, it did really, really well for us. Did you ever have any uh, issues with, like, when you first started doing it before it kind of became like, oh, this is epic. people actually love this, it's a great way to get our stuff out to people. Did you ever have a problem with a publisher coming at you guys and being like, dude, that's not cool, you gotta take it down or whatever? Uh, Rockstar Service with a cease and desist. For which one? For uh, Lost and Damned. Really? Yeah. Because they're Rockstar, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that the only time, like, everyone else? Is there any, like, like maybe less dramatic things where it's like they pull you aside of the show and they're like, dude, I really appreciate it, kid? <laughs> no, no. And we, we try to be judicious about it. Like, we're not, you know, generally speaking, we're not playing 100% of the game. Especially something that like, just had just come out. Like, we're not doing that. It's not about, like, here are the solutions to all these puzzles. Or, you know, there, there are sites out there that, like, day one when The Last of Us was out, it's like, here's every cutscene from The Last of Us uploaded to YouTube to juice our YouTube numbers. Like, that's fucked. Um, like, I, you know, we're not doing that. We're, we're trying to look at the game and, and talk enough to where it is, it is an editorial product. Um, so, you know, no, I've never really had any situation like that. And, and, you know, that's why oftentimes we wait until after the game is out. Sometimes, you know, companies like Nintendo will send out a game and they'll be like, you can take two screenshots and you can put up three minutes of video, but it must be chopped into one minute chunks. And it's just like, okay, well, we're not going to do shit with that until the game is out, and then I can just do whatever we want to do. Um, and, and it's been it's been fun. I've had a couple people like not that many because after after everything kind of went down, like the, the number of people that were willing to call me up and complain about a review score were like, pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there were definitely a couple people that were like, we we think Soul Calibur should have gotten the four, and it's like I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so was it more frequent back then than it is now? That kind of thing, like where you get more like. They say negative interactions with the game creator, developer, or publisher, or whatever. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, like, yes. Is, is that unique to you, or is that just the trend of the industry? I think that, that, was, that was always the entire industry. Okay. You know, I think, you know, it, and it was one of the things where, you know, they, they would try to press in as many different ways as possible, where it's like, oh, well, we're not going to give you preview, you know, to access to our next game, if, you know, because you gave us this score. And you have to be ready to just be like, okay, you know? I guess what are you going to say? Like, oh, no, we'll go change it. Yeah. Uh, you hear all these stories back in the day of like really small sites, and it kind of it reminds me of some of the YouTube stuff that you hear about going on now. Uh, not that's not a, I'm not saying a blanket statement for everyone that's on YouTube, but you would hear individual like fan sites run by one or two people where they would cave and change a score uh, because they were reliant yeah. on free product, and so if someone said, "Well, I'm going to make sure all my PR buddies know not to send you anything," which is not a real thing. Um, and, and people would change their scores. That's why Metacritic had to institute a policy where the first score of a site gives something sticks no matter what. Thanks, uh, Polygon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, yeah, no, because, because sites were like changing scores and getting free graphics cards and all this. It was just this nightmare stuff you hear about yeah. out there. Um, so, yeah. So if it giant bomb went completely, uh, CBS fires like it is tomorrow, uh -huh. what do you do? Make another site, you do something Get else. drunk. Yeah, well, that's it. Once, yeah, you, yeah, once you wake up from that. Yeah, do you yeah do? I mean, uh, so, I mean, you know, like our podcast is, is very successful, and I really enjoy podcasting, and I really believe in podcasting. What do you mean you believe in podcasting? What does that mean? It's like, it, it means that I've spent a lot of years trying to tell ad people that, like, podcasts matter and they should sell ads on it. They're like, nah, yeah. banner ads. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And now there are networks of podcasts and, and you know ad firms that specialize in podcasts, and we've been able to do a deal with one of those companies, and it's like it's finally happened. Yeah. The thing that like I've been telling people like this is happening and it matters and you need to pay attention to it finally happened. So now I get to kind of like walk around and go, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, like I remember when the uh, one up show went away. Um, there was a lot of talk about like why don't they just sell ads? Why don't they do this? And there are a lot of people out like well reasoned arguments like. Well, since there's no way to know if someone even listened to the whole thing or how much does it take to 
downloaded. Now that there's no actual numbers, but so those problems, of, of, they, did they ever exist or did they evaporate? Uh, they existed in a sense where, like, you know, the, the people that were used to buying ads on the internet, like, the internet is very good at tracking all of that stuff. Like, here's how many people saw your ad, here's how many people clicked on it, here's how many interactions you got, impressions, whatever. And, and podcast ads are not that far off from radio, where you can go, like, we've got a number. I can't tell you if there were two people in the room when the podcast was played. I can't even tell them if they listened to the podcast. But I can tell you that this many hundreds of thousands of people downloaded it. And so what happened is I, I think that the, the people selling podcast ads, and also the companies that advertise on podcasts understand that. And so that's why you see, and radio does this now too, where like you see either they're giving out like a custom 800 number that's specific for that ad campaign, or some kind of way to track it that way. That's why you have like promo code Bombcast, and promo yeah, yeah, yeah. code Mark Marin's face, yeah. like whatever it is. Uh, because then they can use that to get, even though it is behind a paywall, are like better than a lot of like free podcasts. So at some point, you're like, well, if we made this free, it would grow exponentially, and then we could put ads on it and right. do an ad-free version for premium people still, obviously, and then try to replace that with new and different premium content and stuff like that. So we, we think about it that way. Like, you know, if we were to actually dedicate ourselves to like, well, we're gonna do a wrestling podcast every two weeks, then at some point it's like, well, maybe we should just make that free. Um, and and you know, put put ads on it. Like yeah. that's the that's the, the talk. So I, I want to do more podcasts just because I, I really like it a lot. Um, and so like for the, the sites that sell ads and stuff, do they take all podcasts you do and lump it together into one number? Or is it like they advertise, I guess that's the ads go in. Yeah, the, the, the numbers are different for every, yeah. for every feed, basically. So we probably could lump it together into one big number and, and go that route. But our main number is really big, so we, we kind of can afford to experiment with some of the smaller stuff and, and do different things there. So I, I think, uh, you know, one thing... I think everyone here enjoys your work, obviously. They wouldn't be here if they didn't, probably, or they're really sick. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, like, We're going to get that asshole. Like, <laughs> what is, what, how do you spend your time every day? Like, how much of it is meetings? How much of it is business stuff? How much of it is just, like, playing games and, like, coming up with, like, what, like walk me through a day. Uh, you know, it, it, it depends on the day, but there's a lot of, uh, you know. Well, okay, walk me through a good day, walk me through a bad day. Uh, on a good day, like we're getting in there and, and getting down to recording with QuickBooks and then take a break for lunch and then record some more uh, and then kind of just, you know, kind of keep looking at the internet in case something happens, you know, and then, you know, right now we don't have a dedicated news person, so we've kind of distributed some of that a little bit where we're, you know, it's like, oh, Alex will take a story here, I'll take a story there, that sort of thing. Um, so there's, there's kind of that aspect of it, of just like watching stuff come in and then having to make the call of like, is this something we want to run? Is this newsworthy enough to where we should write about? Does it have anything they want to say about this? Or is it just like, hey, this DLC got announced. Like that's, yeah, that, that's not, that's not a story. Um, is that, do you think that's not interesting to the, is it because it's not interesting to you to write about that stuff where you think people like, like don't give a shit? I think it's one of those things where like people go to the site definitely give a shit because people are already talking about this stuff on our message board. Yeah. So for me, like, and it's the approach where, like, so right now we're looking for a news person, but I'm not just going to like plug them in and say, write stories. Uh, for me, it's about like, what's the right way to build a news team, a news part of the site that is like respectful of people's time? Because you look at a lot of the sites that specialize in news out there, it's just such a fucking constant churn that if you're not glued to it, you're missing things, or, you know, it's like for a very specific type of person. Yeah. Like, I want to be the news site that's like, here's the stuff that actually matters. I curate a little bit, and then, you know, still present some of the smaller stories just so people are aware that it happened. But, like, if you think about, you know, like a pre order bonus or a season pass announcement, that's one sentence. Yeah. You know, a lot of sites will write two paragraphs because either their back-end system is such that they have to do that to make the page not look like garbage. Um, or, you know, they're doing it for SEO reasons or whatever nefarious stuff they're into. Uh, I want to be able to present that as one sentence and have that on the page. If people want to comment on it or whatever they can, you know, build a way that, that makes it so they still get the information without all the bullshit that has to surround it. Right. Um, Trying to get the conversation started, so to speak. Yeah, someone to start the conversation. Yeah. Just yeah. Join the conversation. Yes, I want people to join the conversation and to like, follow, and subscribe. <laughs> Straight up just hashtag yes. like, It doesn't feel it's not as fun to do that. It's not. Any kind of any kind this of is fun. That is fun. But any kind of two hand, anytime you're trying to make something with both your hands as like a gang sign, yeah, 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 yeah. where you're touching the hands to form a shape like the, the LA thing, like that's not <laughs> racist. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, so 
Okay, so that's a, that's a good day. What's, what's a bad day at Giant Mountain look like for you? Um, a bad day is like, you know, four meetings and, you know. What are the meetings about? Like, the reason I'm asking this is because I, I think, like, a lot of people, like, I see comments on the site a lot of times, it's like, uh, Jeff didn't post anything this week. What the hell is going on? And, like, I, I, I know there's reasons for that because I run a business too, and so, but I, I, yeah. like, I think some insight of that might be helpful. I mean, you know, like, sometimes I'll have to meet with, uh, you know, like our marketing team to talk about, like, the next packs because, like, the, you know, there'll be things like, well, you know, we want to do, at Pax Prime, they, they built a space uh, that people could go hang out in, and then we did a live show there. So it's stuff like, you know, are we going to do this? Are we going to, you know, for Seattle, are we going to rent a boat and get subscribers on it and drink for three hours? <laughs> it's literally something we're talking about doing. I don't know that it'll actually happen, but that's, like, we're, 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 we want to have a big boat park. Um, <laughs> So it's stuff like that, you know, it's, it's regular check-ins with, you know, because there are a lot of people like, you know, Giant Bomb's a very small team, but there's just a, a wide net of people that touch Giant Bomb in different ways, whether it's the Ooh. engineering team, I know. <laughs> sometimes it feels good, sometimes it's like, stop doing Whoa. that. Um, and so it'll be like, you know, the, the design team, like if we have to do something special for Game of the Year, like the design team has to know what kind of page they need to build. The engineering team needs to know what's broken on the side. You know, we need to constantly work on priorities for like, okay, you know, wiki rebuild here, you know, like the, the billing rebuild here, like, you know, this sort of stuff. Like we're, right now they're, they're implementing like a whole new billing back end. Right now, if you have to update your credit card, you can cancel your subscription and resubscribe. Sure. Because the person who built that system is no longer with the company and no one was out there. So then they're stripping all that out, replacing it with something else uh, that'll work and that'll let us build like a referral program. for like, hey, if you got a friend to subscribe, so get free month or, you know, whatever it ends up being. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of stuff like that, of like, you know, okay, well, what are we doing on the back end? Does that stuff work? What, what, where do we want to go from here on like, that side? To the, to the business people, like you mentioned before, like, it's hard to explain to people, like, why you guys are successful and what makes it, like, uh, aside from that problem, mm -hmm. business people, like, get the game guys, or do they get why, like, or is it just, like, you know, moving from ours, not really in a situation? No, they're, they're, they're definitely people that understand, like, you know, the engineering team, I think, you know, they, they they understand what we do and why. Uh, the design team certainly does. Uh, sure. you know, I, I, work with person, I, work, I work with a person directly, and, and he is kind of a business liaison in a lot of ways, where he can kind of look at the numbers and he can go out and, like, basically, like, I got really bad. At, like, our whole first year there was me going to people and saying, no, a boat! And people going, like, what? Fuck you! But he can actually translate no, a boat into, well, we want to activate a space for people to, you know, come and congregate, you know, like, just whatever it needs to be so that people can get their wrap, mind wrapped around it and go, oh, a boat. <laughs> so, so that's actually been like, over the last like year or so, it's been the most valuable thing that's happened to us. Like kind of without, um, without that change, we probably wouldn't exist anymore. Uh, because it's just a language barrier of, of getting our needs met in a, in a group that is rife with other larger sites and all this other stuff in a company. Like it was very hard to get heard and now we're, we're being heard and people understand why. And, and that's been the, the biggest change, and, and now it's like, okay, now let's do it for real. Yeah, how do you manage quality control of the site? Because I mean, for written stuff, there's obviously like, well, Craig's like, oh, your editor looks at it and takes a pass at it. But for video stuff, do you ever just like, so we record something for an hour, and you look at it, it's like, it's just, is it good enough for the site? You just throw it away? I mean, we're putting up hours of Dan drunk talking to his dad, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's definitely like, you know, like I saw the Game of the Year videos before they went up and stuff like that. And, but, you know, like the, the nice thing about like, we're a small crew of people that trust each other to get the job done. And it's one of those things that, you know, like stuff that's internal like that, where it's like, you know, like the Game of the Year videos. Like, I know the types of things that Drew makes. I know the types of things that Vinny makes and, and, and Jason as well. And, and so I just trust them to, it's, it's the, the relationship between like being in front of the camera and being behind the camera like is so super important to what we do. Whereas like, you know, if we were in a situation where like a lot of places will just like, oh, we're coming to town, we're gonna hire a cameraman from that town and they're gonna come point camera at us. Like none of the visual goofs and just weird shit would ever be in any of the videos. Maybe all these shots super straightforward. And that would be that, oh, unless like, you know, I was there going like, okay, well now you need to do this and then turn it like this and then point it at the ceiling at the end because that's how you do it. Um, <laughs> And so, like, just being comfortable in our shooting situation is is how that works. Like, I know they can do. I know they can do good work. I know they have the time to get it done. And so, I just kind of trust them implicitly. Yeah. Um, and you know, when it comes to text and stuff like that, yeah, we, like we send around reviews. 
we don't really send around news articles and stuff, so the typos work their way into there um, occasionally, um, a, a lot. And, <laughs> but the, the reviews process, like we all look at it and go like, does this score line up? Does it make sense? And, and kind of check off on that. Let's talk about the uh, your like creative stuff before you were writing game stuff. So you did that public access TV show. Yeah. Like I've heard, like, I don't know, like I've heard you say it. I don't know anything about it. What was it about? What did you guys do? Like, uh, we were bored kids with a video camera. And I watched a lot of, uh, there was a show on Comedy Central called Access America. And it was literally a show putting a spotlight on public access shows around the, the nation. Sure. And it was terrible. Uh, this was also the time when Wayne's World was very big and uh, Kids in the Hall was very big. Yeah. So uh, with all that lined up and me being 16. Quick back question. Favorite Kids in the Hall sketch? Uh, the uh, Gavin, because like, yeah. if my head were real, yeah. how much would it be worth? Yeah. Um, now, now, I don't think I'll sell. Nah. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so all those things that came together in a way where like, you know, like, I wanted to do public access television. And I, we didn't want to write anything, we didn't want to do anything. It was terrible. Like, a lot of it was us literally filming ourselves driving around, uh, yelling things at people on the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad show. Yeah. It was a bad show. Um, but, you know, it, it, it got me comfortable with people saying a lot of really negative things about me because yeah. we had a phone number at the end of the show. It's why I could read YouTube comments now because that shit is so much worse. And I was 16 and it was just like, they'd be like, oh, God, what the fuck? I, I mean, yeah, I'm big, but <laughs> I can only, the oxy only takes away so much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's shockingly disappointing how bad acne medicine is. Yeah. Like, you think it's 20 fucking 15, right? Yeah. Like, zits should not exist anymore. Nope. This is, like, I remember, I remember thinking, like, uh, I was in high school, and I'm like, and I can't wait till I get older, and then I don't know what I'm saying. I thought once you get to, like, a certain age, zits just disappear. I'm one right now. Right now. <laughs> and my friend's like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, you know, you said, stop it. Zits are like 22, right? And you're like, what are you talking about? You're better. Like, I have cried for like a week straight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was, when I was uh, 16, 15, 16, like my face basically, it was like it had hard crust on all of it. It was a fucking nightmare. Uh, and yeah, I, we eventually, like, my mom took me in and I got retin-A shots or whatever, which they're worried, like, oh, you know, you need to get your blood tested to make sure it's not going to kill you or whatever. It was weird. Like, they did it once and it was like, all gone. I was like, shit, we should have done this like a year and a half ago. <laughs> Um, you, also think, you also think music. Yeah. So what's the, you were telling me a little bit about this yesterday, you were telling me about the, like, we can't the Sunday morning making a song a week thing. Oh yeah, so I mean, you know, I had been in bands before that, it was the, the same guy that I started doing public access with, he was like, we need to start a rap group, because there was another rap group locally that was good, really good, but they weren't maximizing their merchandise opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> and so he was like, we should start a band with sell t-shirts, I'm like, what are you talking about? So we started a rap group, and Whatever, that was what it was, and, and, and we ended up parting ways. And, and yeah, I got to the point where I was, I was uh, living uh, with a guy who was a bass player, uh, and, and he was in a friend of mine's band, and we would just wake up every Sunday, uh, just hungover, and just like, let's write a song, start to finish 90 minutes, go. And so we would, you know, like I was learning how to use all the tools, and he would record a little bass in there, and then we would just write dumb lyrics and just kind of make it happen. And we did that for, you know, every Sunday for a lot of weeks. Is that the band that opened for Run DMC, or is that the No, the first band, Headboard, with the, the, after I left, I came back as a one-night-only thing, uh, because I can rap uh, better than... Anyway, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So they, they opened, we opened for Run DMC, I came out and did a couple of songs uh, when they played in Petaluma. And uh, my friend, uh, who was my roommate for a very long time, and was the Ricker on uh, one of... That guy was fucking cool. Another podcast. Yeah, Nintendo, yeah. Nintendo, what was it? The Nintendo Download the Gas Press. Yeah, it's a pretty gross guy. So he, he was my roommate up until about a month ago when I finally said, dude, you can't. <laughs> I got a girl living here, you can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, is that, is, I mean, it sounds like you did a lot of that stuff. Like, is that, does Giant Bomb give you that same outlet, the same kind of like, the same boost, or do you miss aspects of that? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it, it does. Like, I, there are certainly aspects of it that I miss, and, you know, I wish I had more time to do some music here and there. Um, but yeah, it was always, like, I was recording music a lot as almost a rebellion when stuff at GameSpot got busy. So it would always be like in November, and they'd be like, I have to give this right three songs, I don't know. You, gotta feel down. you know, it was just like a, a, some kind of release from 
from kind of the, the grind of, of that part of that job. Um, so now, like, you know, being relatively creatively fulfilled, uh, I do a, a less of that. But I want to do more. I want to rap more. Um, I want you to rap more. Okay. Can you give him a beat? No. Not right. Not right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> the, uh, so, so we've got two... <laughs> this is why the rapping's not going to happen. <clears throat> uh, give me 30 seconds on K Flay. Uh, 30 seconds on K Flay. K Flay is, uh, she is a rapper, uh, and actually she's doing more than just rapping now. Like, her music, you know, like, she's just production. Yeah, she's just production too. She's singing a lot. And uh, K Flay, uh, yeah, she's, uh, come, her music is coming out of San Francisco. It seems like she's going to get real big. And we both want to marry her. <laughs> My, so uh, we had a, a late night last night of where I, we were listening to a lot of uh, rap music, hot on, jams, hot jams on Dave's laptop, and I'm like, "Oh, you, you heard of K. Flay?" And he's like, "Oh." <laughs> so he's all about it right now. Like I'm, I'm deep in the blast radius of K. Flay, and uh, I got family and stuff, but like. <laughs> Give me your top five ch favorite Chicago-based game developers. Uh, of all time. In all order? Time. Of, all of all time. Yeah. Uh, and of all time, uh, I think uh, Midway's got to be number one. Okay. All time. I'll allow it. Um, <laughs> are there any others? <laughs> he in Chicago did that Def Jam Icon game. Yeah, Young Horses did Octa Dad, that's a good one. Yeah. Is it Stern based there? <laughs> I think the new Tony Hawk game's coming out of this. <laughs> yeah, so I'd probably say uh, mid Next question. Uh, Jeff, what's sexy to you? What's uh, I'm sorry, what? What's sexy to you? What's what sexy, sexy to me? You know, um, you know somebody's gonna see something and you're like, mm, that's sexy. <laughs> What's sexy? Like for me, it's like this is like a lady who like, likes the neck right here. Sexy. What's sure. Sexy. Yeah. sexy oh, no, I, I get that. Like back of the neck yeah. type yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Oh, what's sexy? I'm not, you gotta hear three things. Oh, you know? It's not true. Everything. Yeah, most everything is not sexy. Oh, that's, you're just looking at it wrong. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, everything I'm wrong. Come on. <laughs> Um, do I have anything else that's worth talking about? Uh, I'm going to get one more question. I'm going to get people lined up for the Q&A part. Um, there's one, two lines here, one there, one there. If you have a question, I'm going to ask Jeff directly. Yeah. Um, so, Jeff, to close this up, what was your favorite piece of content you've ever made at Giant Bomb? Oh, jeez. Like, what's a video you like? I'm going to find a way to watch it right now, so thank you. Um, it might be the TV shows, the Game of the Year, the Game of the Year stuff that we did, the fake TV shows. What's your favorite one of those? My favorite one of those is the 60 Minutes one. It's really good. Because uh, everyone is so good in it. Like, Brad fucking nails that shit so hard. Like, in the beginning, just the, the cadence of 60 Minutes. Like, he didn't, like, he, he's, that was one thing, like, you know, Brad's confidence would be all over the place when we're recording stuff. Yeah. That was one thing he's like, I got this. No, it's, I'll come in tomorrow, I'll come I'll wear the suit, it'll be fine. Yeah. And we're like, do you want to run through this? Like, no, no, I'll, I'll, no, I'll take this. And just came in and just like, boom! I was like, oh shit. Like, he just, he watches him for 60 minutes and he can nail it. So, I remember watching that the first time, like, it was like, you know, a couple days before Christmas or whatever, I'm watching it, and you drop that, I'm the Walter Cronkite one. I had to fucking pause it. <laughs> It felt so good. It's so good. It's so good. Walter Cronkite. The Walter Cronkite. Oh. <laughs> God damn it, that's funny. <laughs> All right. I think um, that was. I think that's. I, I think that whole thing was ad lived. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, it, it was a loose. There was a loose paragraph written that, that I kind of went from. I think. But, okay. Cool. Uh, we'll start here. Hey, Jeff. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How did you get started in game journalism? And also, uh, can you give me any tips on how to get started or pushing me in that I, I think, you know, 
or the, the, the way that I get in, got in doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, yeah. But I, I would say that, like, you know, the, the thing today is to build a body of work so that you have something to show people. Um, and it, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing, like, in, in the traditional sense of, like, the, the, the big sites and, and that sort of mentality where so many people have been laid off. Uh, across the board from these different sites that, you know, if you're looking for an experienced person, they're already out there. There's tons of them. Uh, so it's hard for new people to get in as a result because people don't like to train people if they can help it. You know, it's a lot easier to get someone in there and say, like, okay, I know I can sit this person down and they will go. Um, but if you build a body of work that can show that, like, you can go and, and that you can get things done and you have a voice that you have, uh, you know, the, the basic skills together, that really does go along. Um, so I, I would say that that's the way. But like you know, as far as me, like you know, it's actually it is all tied to public access and band stuff. The guy that I did public access with, and then started a band with, he would, in high school decided he wanted to write about video games for the local newspaper. So he was like a 15 year old, 14 year old, uh, covering video games uh, for the Petaluma newspaper. And so he was going to CES, which was before E3, all the video games were at CES. And I become friends with him through us doing public access. And he was just like, do you want to come to this thing? I'm like, yeah, I want to come to this thing. <laughs> and so going to CES and starting to kind of interact with the people that worked at video game companies, uh, you know, you start to meet people, things start to happen, you get a job here, you get a job there. Um, and like that sort of stuff, just, you know, E3 is not the place for that anymore. It's all ridiculous now. So, um, so yeah, and you kind of, kind of get into it that way. Uh, so I was still in high school when I was... You know, going out there, like I, uh, you know, I kind of dropped out of like the one college class I was taking, uh, so that I could go to Reno and see Mortal Kombat three before it was out, <laughs> uh, which was way more important than whatever that college class was. And, uh, and, and that was that is actually horrifying, terrifying advice to be dispensing. Yeah, don't. I mean, don't actually, don't actually do that. You should actually, you should finish school. I mean, honestly, like I, I you know, like I, I got into it out of high school and. and you know, that was a weird thing, but, but straight up, like, you know, along with having a body of work, being able to say, you know, hey, I finished school, I didn't drop out, like, I actually finished a thing, I saw it through. Like, you need to be able to say, I saw it through on enough different things for, for people, I think. That's, I guess, my advice. Cool. Does that seem sound? Yeah, I think that's good advice. That checks out. All right. I'm all right. Thanks. Thanks. So I'm going to also, as a professional interviewer, I'm going to uh, write your questions. Um, that gets 12. <laughs> uh, have you tried Whataburger yet? Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so I, I got a burger and then I was like, well, I want to try this chicken stuff. So I got the chicken bites that came with cream gravy. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's real good. I could feel myself dying as I was eating it. Uh, but that, it was worth it. It felt worth it. Yeah, buffalo. 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 Alright, I asked this question at a Whoa, oh, yeah, real hot. Alright, hot mic. Yes, I'll stand here. I asked this question at another panel, so people might think I'm kind of rude for asking it again, but I want your advice. Um, you know, I stopped going to school about four years ago because, let's face it, I didn't get shit, and now, working, uh, you know, an adult person's job, it, uh, it's not, it's worse. It's bad. So, at this point, I'm looking at going back to school because I'm lucky enough to have that resource. And I want to go for multi-platform journalism. And I was wondering, is that a sound idea with such an oversaturated market with the internet when everyone thinks they're a critic? I, yeah, I think it's, it's, it can be hard. I think, you know, if, if you're going to take journalism, like, use it. You know, like, get into the news and the, and the investigative end of it if that's what you care about. But yeah, when it comes to like reviewing things and like the, you know, when I'm looking to hire someone, like the, the journalistic, I mean, I'm looking for a news person right now. So like there's, you know, in that case, I'm like, yes, I want you to have some chops on the journalism side of things. Uh, but it's, it's one part of it. You know, I need someone who can be uh, affable on a podcast, someone who can, you know, read from a teleprompter when necessary, someone who can be comfortable on camera uh, to a certain extent and, and, you know, like, and also fit in like chemistry wise with the rest of the crew because there's, there's rarely instances where it's only one person in a piece of content doing something. So, you know, hiring for New York, like, I need to make sure that this person fits in well with, with Vinny and Alex's dynamic and all that sort of stuff. And so it's become very strange. Uh, it used to be, you know, there was no video, there was no audio, like we were just writing. So it was just like, it was very cut and dry, like you can write, your opinions are sound, like you're not an idiot, okay, this job is for you. 
And then at some point, like, I started joking, like, we should probably start doing screen tests when we're hiring people. And we go, <laughs> but no, seriously, we should probably <laughs> start doing screen tests for people. And it, it's a really crazy concept, like, because it, it, it changes it from, well, I need you to have this set of skills to, you need to not only have this set of skills, but also, like, this other super crazy, like, it's almost like casting at some point, and that's insane. Um, and that makes it really difficult to find uh, the right person for a job. Um, Any classes specifically to look at and pursue that would help in that regard? Uh, I think, you know, like, a, for, for me, you know, the, there was a certain amount of, like, getting out of your shell type stuff that came with uh, drama, theater. I, mean, I didn't do a lot of it. I did just enough. Uh, to where I didn't have to get sucked into that scene. It was a nightmare. Um, but yeah, like, you know, at one point I had to like dance like Greece, and I'm like, this is, I don't want to do this. Um, and, and yeah, but I, I think that like that, there are certain aspects of that, the kind of performative elements of that, that, that can really aid someone. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Sandwich albatross. <laughs> so I don't have a question, but I just want to preface one thing, because I know I'll probably never get a chance to do it. Um, I grew up in high school and middle school, um, abused as a kid. My, my father was bipolar, mm. and um, it was you guys that allowed me to escape. Uh, I watched you guys from, from uh, Game Spot to Giant Bomb, following you guys. Um, used to burn CDs of uh, the Hot Spot um, at my friend's house, so I could actually go and, and uh, just escape for a little while. Um, so I, did, I got to do a bunch of great things, um, found my own business successfully, right. um, in media actually, uh, because of you guys. I don't know if I would ever have gotten the chance to do that, so I just want to thank you. Awesome. For that. Thank you. And also, um, on the Swords of Dan uh, rating scale, uh, how, how many Swords of Dan would you give uh, Destiny? Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> if Destiny had a, like a potion thing where you could combine a certain potions in a way that would kill yourself, then it would basically be so bad. So, uh, so, but it, it's, it's maybe about halfway there. So, five. Out of so damn. Four of the rate twos out of five. Whoa. Hi, I'm the guy who gave the up hack on Friday, so I hope he's doing well. Yes, okay. he is, yes. So my question is, uh, will you be going to Evo this year? Yes. He's going to Evo. <laughs> <laughs> this piece of shit. Yes, Evo is like the best thing in the world, even if you're not in fighting games. It's just so good. The community's awesome. It's people hanging out, playing games, and just doing shit. It's Vegas, and you're drinking, and it's the best. And he's like, it's pretty close to games comedy 3. I don't know. <laughs> For whatever reason, it's always the same weekend as California Extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, a classic arcade show. I, I want to go to Evo. It's always... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, honestly, the thing is, like, the, the time you have to book your Evo stuff is always right around E3, and I'm always so burned out from E3. I was like, I just want to hide in my house. Uh, so it, it ends up, like, killing my Evo dreams every year. But yeah, every year I get a little bit closer saying, fuck it, let's go to Evo. So maybe this will be the year. I don't know. If you make it, I hope I'll see, hope I'll see you there. Cool. Yeah, you were an A until that last comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my very favorite new song. Hi, Dave. Um, Jeff, I feel like I hear a lot of people are like, I would do games journalism if only, like, I didn't feel like it would ruin my gaming habits, or like, I would hate video <laughs> games after it. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> when you, do you ever have those moments where you're just like, I don't want to play video games because it feels too much like work, and then how do you get over it? Also, this conference center loves Pepsi. Uh, have you rubbed it in John Drake's face yet? That there's like no Coke anywhere to I, in this conference? Uh, he, he admits Coke out of his pores. <laughs> <laughs> it's just dripping all over the place. So. Sure, what they have emotions about. Yeah, it's like a sparkle kind of idea. Um, so, uh, I was always the sort of person that played their games very quickly and finished them and moved on, uh, which ended up being really conducive to reviewing games. That's, that's precisely the, the nature of that job. Is, you know, you have to get to a certain point where you're like, I'm pretty decent at this. I'm going to play through it in two sittings. And okay, that's cool. Let's move on. Um, so that, that made me like a, a pretty fast reviewer. It's actually how I got hired at GameSpot in the first place. Is they freelanced a couple of assignments to me. 
And like I just turned them around insanely fast. And they were like, that's actually exactly what we need right now is insanely fast. So get in here. And, and that worked out really well. Um, but yeah, you know, there, there's, you know, it, it's a really weird thing to like complain about because Jesus Christ in video games. I'm not moving boxes for a living. Um, but yeah, when you take your primary hobby, the thing that you do for fun all the time, and then suddenly it's the thing you do for work, like it's, it can get dark in times where it's like, okay, well, you come to those realizations like, I spent the whole weekend playing video games, and now I have to go back and play more video games. But it's like, so I would always delineate it like, I'm playing the video games that I want to play versus the video games that I have to play uh, for review or, or whatever. And, and that ended up working out most of the time. Um, but now we're at a point where, like, I'm not trying to review every single game ever made, so now I more or less just kind of try to stick to the things that I want to play, whether it's just I'm interested, in, even if it's bad, like, I just want to see this thing through and see just how bad is this thing. Um, or, or because it's, it's something I, you know, actually enjoy. Um, and, and that's been, that's been pretty good. That's been really freeing. But yeah, it, it does get me to a point where, like, I don't necessarily go home on the weekend and, and spend 20 hours of the weekend playing games anymore. Um, I'll have those weekends if there's something hot, if there's something like I am totally obsessed with. Like Destiny? Yeah, like Destiny. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, yes, I was upset with Destiny for a while. I think that's like, there's that feeling just like, there's got to be more here, right? <laughs> I even got the PS4 version with the extra thing, so like, that's the, but still, not enough. Uh, yeah, so, yes. Good or bad, yeah, I definitely will get obsessed with things uh, over time. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. That was the Falcon Theater of questions. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gerstmann. Hi. Mr. Lane. Uh, <laughs> I'm here representing the National Wind Jamming Association, the NWA. <laughs> I'm a big OWA fan. I thought Dope Man was good. Oh, <laughs> Boy, you should have known by now. Yeah. Easy does it. Oh. Uh, Is he always hard? Is it always hard? Mr. Lane, it's my time. Sorry. <laughs> Sweet! Sweet! <laughs> But the, but the league is struggling, and uh, I think we've identified the reason is that all of the successful sports have annual video game releases. Football has the Madden series, uh, Extreme Scorpion uh, Bicycling has the Bike series. Um, and so, given your connections to the industry, to real game developers, people like Dave Wayne, uh, what's it going to take for you, as probably the world's biggest Windjammers fan, to get annual releases? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, it's uh, my understanding is that it's a very long road to to win jammers and damn near impossible. Uh, it is actually damn near impossible to make it happen. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I think I think it would be great if someone finally stepped up and made a new win jammers. And, uh, you know, like there's such a renaissance right now <laughs> with just the independent. Esports, kind of minimalist esports, whatever you want to call that genre. There's such a renaissance now that a publisher could almost specialize in a style of game. They could almost be like the sports friends of publishers or something like that. And if some one of those publishers were to step up and actually do the legwork um, and actually and actually no. nail this down, no. uh, you know, maybe we could see something like that someday, but I, I seriously doubt it. It sounds like one of those things that lives in a business hole that is too deep to climb out of. And that's the sad truth. <laughs> so someone needs to take property that they already own, like if they made like a two-button fighting game or something like that, or discs <laughs> in or something like that, then maybe that, maybe that would be where to go. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just such a worker. Thank you. <laughs> I say, uh, Someone took my serious question earlier, so I'm left kind of my, uh, my, my jerk. Rolled together. <laughs> <Both together. laughs> um, last night, I noticed on Twitter that uh, Dan Riker was going on about Freebird being the best song ever. I wanted to see what your thoughts on Freebird were. Uh, yes. I don't know. So for the record, I think that was a fine question. I think you should have done more with it. Blank space. Now that's a 
that song. Yeah. yeah. Just out of control. I can't talk about that right now. Okay. So good. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, with the recent events that have happened, kind of, well, a trend is occurring industry wide. We're seeing, you know, the kind of funny guys split from IGN. We're seeing Jeff Keeley leaving his own thing. Do you see a future, and what would that look like, and what would your thoughts be on it? You separating from CBS and doing your own. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it worked out pretty well last time, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe that's something that could happen down the line, but it, right now it, it doesn't need to, you know, like we have... Do you currently uh, feel you have enough flexibility? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you definitely. You know, it, there are things that we're able to do as a part of this larger company that would be very difficult for us to do on our own. And just the logistical support uh, that they give us and the engineering support, you know, it's, if we were to strike out on our own next time, I would either have to like rope in a fresh set of designers and developers and, and give it a go with a very big crew or not have a website and go to YouTube, which YouTube I think is going to become increasingly hostile ground for, uh, for content over the years ahead as you know, like more of these struggles over like, you know, who owns the IP, like if you're, if you're streaming our video game, do we get a cut, like that sort of stuff, the copyright strikes, like you know, the, that stuff can get tricky fast. Uh, so it, it's it's hard out there if you're uh, if you're independent, um, and yeah, there are things that you know like this this company has not imposed upon me yeah. once because uh, there are enough of them there that remember how it went last time. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, but also like they have no reason to, you know, like, like we're all we're all going in the same direction of just like we're building this cool thing and it's doing well. So like the numbers end of it is like cool, and then we're like, well, let's do dumber shit. <laughs> and so until it all breaks, then you know someone will, you know could eventually step in and go, all right, let's put the brakes on this, you nutcase. And then I'd be like, well, you know, see how it goes from there. But but right now, there's zero need for us to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think we're close to time. Yeah. Right? See, this will be the last question. New Tony Hawk, pro skater at that. So it kind of got off the rails. Passed over ground, underground. I like what you did there. Got a bit, you know, kind of, hey, it's a wacky skater story. And it just got completely bonkers for two. I think it kind of went bad with that. Should, should the next Tony Hawk, are we talking like one to three, where it's two minutes, get your, uh, all these goals you got to accomplish, we try and do that. It should be a more kind of open world, like four did, where it's, hey, go talk to that guy and go find skate letters. I think it'd be really hard to get a Tony Hawk game across that had small two-minute runs and small levels these days. I think that the expectation of players is a is a wider, richer world. Right. Um, so I, I think like probably the right move for that game would have been to be more of an open world. Uh -huh. um, and but it's going to be pure. Like I think that you know there are things you can set up where like you know okay this area of the map when you activate this goal we're going to limit you to this zone to complete these so tasks. Like, yeah. You know, the four sort of did some of that stuff. Like the uh, tournaments or whatever, where it's like, okay, silver, bronze, gold, right. go for yeah. three minutes. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But kind of just have, have a, that be in world transitions instead of going out to a menu and, and that sort of thing. Like, way. could this even, so it's like a nice sort of fan service thing, but could this actually come back or like, because it's stagnated series. One of my favorites, but like, yeah. can I do anything else with it? <laughs> I tried. Yeah. And they did something terrible with it twice. I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like that's one of those things where, like, if I had the answer to that question, I would be going somewhere and solving that problem yeah. for money. Uh, but I don't know what you do with Tony Hawk in 2015. You know, I don't think it's... Make it good. Classic isn't good. The new one? Yeah, that's the thing. That, that HD thing, like, the timing of it all felt bad, and it just, it, 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 was, a, it was a bad product. Um, so, like, if those same people are doing this, then I'm already kind of like... See how it goes. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think making a skateboarding game right now is, is really strange, but also really exciting. Um, so I, I hope that there's no skate games coming out. Like, yeah, I don't that know. studio <laughs> doesn't even exist. Yeah. Black Box has been yeah. scattered into nine different things, yeah. and the people are all over the place. And it's one of those things where it's like, what is EA doing? It's like, is every studio just quietly working on a Star Wars game somewhere? <laughs> like, be skinning whatever it is they do normally. It's like, well, we're doing Plants vs Zombies. The Force Warfare. Recording <laughs> <laughs> Superman 64. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, first, we have to let out the show. Uh, I did have one note, though, that someone had some business for Run GFP. Excuse, excuse me. Sorry, Jack. I'm sorry. I just needed to say something. Uh -huh. I know the panel's over and everything, but like, you know, I just felt like. 
I just had to say something to your client, Dr. Traxu. Okay. Um, he, is, he was going to come, and then he heard that there was no action for him, and he figured he'd stay out of the country. Okay, that's infuriating, because uh, I got some words for that motherfucker, right? Like, <laughs> you know, we got a beef, me and him. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if anyone here remembers, but about four months ago, Pax Prime, during the industry rumble, um, okay. there was some serious collusion, like, it was you, and the under Draker and your awful clients, you were about to get some glass, but uh, w without realizing it, I got glass right in the head. Went to Go figure, huh? What the fuck? What the fuck? I wonder why. Here's your charming because disposition. Like, hey, no, no, it's because I'm too good. That's the thing. That's the thing. So, no, but that shit cost me my shot at the industry title. So, I, um, I, I feel like there's some unfinished business between Tracksuit and me, and uh, I need you to pass this along to him, okay? Yeah, so, yeah, um, pass it along. One on one, one on one, me and him, in Boston, at Paxomania, Sunday, March 8th, Saturday Night Slam Masters. Watch your motherfucking back. Get the fuck away! And my client will see you in Boston. Alright, I'm gonna see that coke out crackhead when the time comes. Not if he sees you first. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Cool. Uh, thanks everyone for that. Just a hand for Patreon for more questions. Uh, that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah. Listen to your show for since it's fucking free. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Keep up the good work. Hey, I get to ask you a question. Well, big fan. I was wondering real quick. Um, do you think you know any positive things you think might have um, changed that Ryan Davis might have been? Oh, I, cool things that were gonna happen. I mean, it, it's hard to say. You know, it's hard to say with anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, one way or the other, right? But yeah, thanks. So, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. Hey, a picture? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thanks a lot. Come back to Texas. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to thank you for being awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Shake your hand. Thank Hi. you for being awesome. Thanks. You sign my badge? Hey, yeah, sure. Here you go. Which one do you want? Friday or Saturday? <laughs> oh, whichever one's you know, whichever it's easier. One's, yeah. We'll make it easier. Here. <laughs> the whole shebang. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Hey, hey, hi. Um, I'm actually going to be in Tuesday for an interview with uh, CBSI Games. Oh, cool. Can't tell you too much, but uh, what, what is your Tuesday looking like? Uh, I'm not there. You know, I'm not back from this until Wednesday. Okay, I'm actually there all week. Would you happen to have like a lunch available sometime? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Because uh, since I'm missing Monday and Tuesday, like the rest of the week's that super week busy. Is but go really but yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're around, like, I'm maybe. there till next Wednesday. So. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. I'll try to get something a little bit more serious. I'm meeting with Danny that Tuesday. So. Okay. Cool. If right. things actually start going serious, I I'd like to talk. Awesome. To yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Jeff, you got hey. something, man. Right. Oh. Hey, very <laughs> nice. Thanks. <laughs> Would you mind signing Brit that? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 Not anymore. Not after what you just pulled. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, I've been trying to get these demos of Dan, but he went off the like radar. Do you okay. know if he's around anywhere? Yeah, he's in town. I mean, yeah, oh, I think he's still in town. Yeah, them? sure. Okay, this is yeah. a shit ton of demos. Okay, cool. Uh, Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. You want on then? We're doing a picture with Tracks and Rep. Hey. There we go. We should probably take it outside because there's another panel that has to come in. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll be out there. I'll hang out uh, outside the front. Three's the best Tony Hog, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Can you sign these? Yeah, sure. Do you have a pen? I don't uh, know. Thank you.
Underground is a close second. Actually, Underground 2, if you, if you look past the story mode... Yeah, like, it's not it. bad. Like, I just played Thug 2 for a while, it's, not that long ago. Good, it's like, it's, there's things about it, but... Yeah, no, sure. Also, I want to say real quick, I have been to pack the past the uh, two packs primes, and I missed, I missed the giant mob pile every time we just... Oh, wow, yeah. And I live, like, four hours from here, so... Cool. The only reason yeah. I came. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Thank you so much. Hey, once you get a picture, bud, you want to start? Yeah, like, sure, yeah, yeah. I'm going to shake your hand so you thanks for everything. Oh, thank you. So, thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Thank you. First of all, if you go out here San Antonio, first day, I mean, San Antonio, and you can like it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was a great panel. Cool, thank you. Can I get a picture with you? You're yeah, my sure. favorite one on Giant Bob. Oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. How you doing? What's going on, man? Ready? Oh, thanks. Thanks we a lot have for like coming. A, we have like a brutal three-hour commute. You make our life. Oh, and we wow. listen to you. Like, like each way three hours? Or? Round trip. Right. Okay, yeah. That, man, I guess that's not that's she's far She's not really mine, even a gamer, but she's but fucking addicted. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that that's says a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. thanks, man. Awesome. I love you. Thanks for coming. Hey, hi. Signing something Dan also signed? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, what do you have a pen? I don't have a pen. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm not 100% sure what Gurren Lagann is. Either, it's an so anime. I, yeah, like I know that much, but I barely know what it is, but, but my friend does, so. okay? <laughs> Thanks a lot. That was a good panel. Thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I just happened to have Thank it. you. Yeah, thank you. He will appreciate it. <laughs> Enjoy cool. San Antonio. Yeah, thanks. Hey, I, I didn't really have a question. Um, friend of mine, just tell me though, you're still streaming this. Yeah. <laughs> Could you uh, sign my back? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, I just haven't turned it off yet. Fair enough. Yeah, I get to hear about all your hot lunch plans. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up. I'm making my way, trying to. Yeah. I don't want to be yeah. pain, No, no, totally. Yeah. Hey, uh, one more thing. Yeah. I know you said you got the place for the Rumble. Can you at least give me the bar name? I have to move my car from my hotel, like right now. I, I don't know what it he is. He doesn't. All right, I'll try uh, to find. Dan knows, yeah. but yeah. That mystery, I'll never find him. Yeah. You gonna hang out outside? Yeah, yeah. Since you got a second, it's actually for the GameSpot uh, social media position. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm a little bit under under prepared, they say, because mm. I've only done smaller events and smaller paid gigs. Well, I mean, if, I they're, if, the, if they're games. bringing you in, then, you know, that's a good sign. It took so. me a lot of persistence and a lot of saying, no, fuck mm. you, I can do this. Fuck yeah. y'all, Mixler! Yeah, what up, yeah. What up Jeffler? Half y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Just run away every yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, at least now they know what position, because if they heard that, they know what's up. So don't go spreading that, you asshole. Ah, uh, there are multiple openings. Oh, it's still on it. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Right here, he's going to take this picture. Hey. Sweet. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Can I get one as well? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll send you to load this camera up. I met Dan last night at the Normal Thomas oh, show. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to get you, man? Don't, oh, yeah. Do you want a selfie or do you want me to get no, you? No, no, you can get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 sure. yeah. Selfie cameras are good these days. The uh, I hit the menu button, yeah. so how do I post yeah. it? Yeah. I, just, I can't stand something. All right. I saw the middle button there. The middle button, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Awesome. All right, let me good. Check it. One, two, three. Firing. Firing. Did it work? I got three. So okay, sure sweet. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I got you, man. Good. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I love those. Yeah, because I joined a subway with them. Hey, do you want to do a subway? Do you want me to get you after that? Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Great. That's a pretty picture. Cool. That's good. That's good. Yeah, sure. All right. One, two, three. Bang. That one's out of focus. Hold on. Alright, that third one should be good. Nice.
Uh, what you were saying about being prepared for everything and having a little everything, that's kind of what I've done. So in the future, if smaller positions for Giant Bomb are available, that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. Because I know you are looking for your senior news person. Right, yeah. So, but yeah. like, I know you were talking about freelancing, you were talking about a lower news team. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. I could jump to that easily. Okay. Yeah. I'll hear from you later. Yeah. Hi. I just had a question. Yeah. I know at one point you and Chris Foods Community, or I guess Giant Bomb and Chris Foods Community were right. talking about doing something together before mm -hmm. Brian yeah. and I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to cry. Um, so is there anything going on with that still? Max and I need to sit down and talk about it. Yeah. Uh, we just haven't yet. It's, uh, I think every time it comes up, we're like, yeah, we still need to do this. But yeah. uh, everyone's just been so busy, right. we just need to kind of figure out what we're Okay, I was just curious when you guys were that. Yeah. Cool. Safe travels, home. Thanks. Um, do you think a market, a market has to be like oversaturated with certain genres before the genre goes away? Because like, when Rock Band came along, there were a lot of Guitar Hero games, and then it kind of right. died off, then Skate came along. Yeah, I, I think everything works in cycles like that. You know, some stuff will come back. And, I mean, they're running those Rock Band surveys right now. Like, clearly they're doing something. Um, so, you know, like, the, everything kind of up and down with that stuff. But, yeah, I think that, you know, it, skateboarding will come back. I just don't know if skate, skateboarding is, like, big enough in a mainstream way. Yeah, it's like late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, really right, yeah. I mean, and they were, you know, eventually Tony Hawk was just riding successive jackass in a weird way. Like, those games were just, it was all Bam Margera. Yeah, like so, yeah. Um, so, like, I don't know what the hook is now to get more people to care about it. Or maybe they're making a way smaller game. You know, maybe they don't need to make it some huge disc game. Maybe it's just downloadable. It's hard to know until we see what they're working on. But, yeah, everything everything goes away. Everything comes back. Unless you're a competitive first-person shooter. Because those will probably never go away at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah thank you. Hi. I just wanted to ask you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming, man. Yeah. It was, uh... It's, it's, you know, like it's been, like I don't live with Chris anymore, yeah, so, so like the, the opportunity to record stuff just yeah. isn't, isn't there the way I just it remember used to I was be. like 14 and I downloaded the uh, 17 ground lines, right? Yeah, so yeah. First, yeah, and I, like I, almost every track on it I liked, like I was surprised. Nice. Like, like yeah. at first, like I remember like, you know, Two Hots always the one, and that was actually the next album, but I, like Two Hots when everyone knows because that was the hotspot theme. Right. But like, you know, I really liked uh, Space Striker, Go Vietnam. Nice. Uh, I actually really liked Future Robin a lot. I was just kind of looking forward to seeing like more of that. Like, I would totally love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'd really like to do it. It's just it's hard to find the time these days. Yeah, with, I, I, you know, like Chris, Chris lives an hour and a half away, so he'll come up and crash on my couch sometimes. But yeah. yeah. Um, and then I guess this is just a given. Like video reviews for Giant Bomb is done. Like that's totally. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I, just I it's like, not a. Yeah. Yeah. The, you guys did MGS4 and Battlefield. Wasn't that kind of it? We did, I think the last one was Zelda. I think that was okay. the last one. But so, it, you know the, the the amount of time that has to go into editing those and making yeah. them tight. We could do four or five quick looks. Quick so at some point, it's just a that. weird numbers game of just like, well, you know, it's, it's not worth it for us yeah. to, to do this stuff. Sure. So, you know, we may, may get to a point someday, but like, I, I think that reviews in general, you know, we're doing way less of them. Like, we're, yeah. we're talking about games in, in, in other still, ways. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, and actually, I, I think Dan is a great addition. I actually love a lot of the reviews that you write. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this one is really just like you, Jeff, Alex, and Brad. I mean, not Jeff, it's you, Dan, Alex, and Brad. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, no, I mean, they're still top notch. I read them. Thanks. Great. Yeah, yeah. Keep them up. Oh, would you mind signing my pass? No, no, no. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. And then uh, if I could just get one picture. Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, no, thanks for coming. Yeah. Just uh, anyway, I just wanted to say hello. Uh, it's a great panel, but I've been listening to you since the uh, Giant Bond or 
Yeah, game spot. Oh, game cool. spotting. It's great. Uh, yeah, I always love your personality and uh, just all the hours we're listening to you. I feel like I have a little understanding. I, well, I definitely know what games you like, <laughs> but the rest is kind of fun too. Cool. Especially Thanks. Yeah. Minutes, but, uh, anyway, uh, I had a question for I just asked like, what was the Turbo Graphics game like? What was the what? The Turbo Graphics game. Like. Oh, um, I, I mean, I think Bomberman '93 yeah. is probably like my quintessential turbo game. But um, hmm. it'd be fun if you. Isn't that the one where you can do up the crazy amount of people on screen? No, that's Saturn, Saturn Bomberman. Bomberman. Yeah, yeah. But I, I won like a good Bomberman '93 tournament. Cool. Like was was pretty good at it for a while. So awesome. uh, I thought that uh, Battle Royale was fun. It's a terrible game, but like it's just kind of funny. So, but yeah. Yeah, I just uh, got a duo R the region by yeah. RGB, and it's awesome. Yeah, that thing's great. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty much what I bought, too. Can you get a real quick picture? Yeah, sure. So, can you take this? Just press the button. Well, I won't press anything else on accident. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Make sure it came out good before you leave. Oh, okay, yeah, well. Yeah, we're both on it. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Well, it could have been blurry. I'm going to I made a bad at giant bar account when the site first opened. Oh, cool. Awesome. I guess the uh, site didn't work with Opera back then because uh, <laughs> I, just, I just kept trying and I think I tripped the trigger for too many accounts. Oh, yeah. So technically, okay. I've been banned since the beginning of Giant Bomb. Nice. Is there Great any, work. Is there anyone I can uh, actually contact? If on you the site? write to support at giantbomb.com and explain that and say that you talk to me, maybe, uh, Rory answers all that stuff. So so hopefully, hopefully, we can figure that out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Hey, I know you back at the college review event. Okay. But I didn't have like a fancy business card or yeah. anything back then, so awesome. But yeah, um, cool. I love I love your work. I love all that stuff. So thanks. My question I was going to ask is, do you think the next COD's going to have boost and jetpacks? I and bet all that? it doesn't. It should, but I, I, I bet that whatever Treyarch's doing is probably its own thing because they probably don't want to look like they're following on from someone else's work. But I don't know what the dynamic is between those studios because now Advanced Warfare is going to have zombies, and that was always a Treyarch thing. So I, I don't know what they'll do from here. Uh, Maybe yeah, jetpack World War II. Con. Right. Yeah, just go like weird retro alternate history yeah. or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but hopefully it'll be something. Thanks for the panel. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. How you doing? Uh, one question, and then like I guess a comment. But you. I think the first person who introduced me to you, like, I think while you were still part of GameSpot, uh-huh. was, uh, I think, a guy who knows, like, do you remember Nicholas Cola? Yeah, yeah, I okay. know Nick, yeah. Yeah, he was my roommate in college. Okay, so. yeah. He's, like, he's down in L.A. Yeah, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, he's right? He's working for Sony's mobile game Yeah, like, yeah. It's weird. He went, I mean, we went to San Jose State together, and he okay. got, like, an RTVF degree, yeah. and he wanted to do that for a while, but then he just said, fuck it, I'm going to do game stuff with yeah. Sony instead. Weird. Yeah. yeah, so he, I, he made some that. I tried to get him to come to my wedding, but he was too busy. Yeah, I haven't, anyway. I haven't seen Nick in a long time. But yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. But, uh, and then, I just, well, thanks for hanging out after these, and then, like, it's strange to say, but, like, I never cared or even followed about any video games review site. Mm-hmm. And it, was, it wasn't even right when you started, because, like, I had to hear about it from other people. First. Sure, yeah. Because, it, you know, it felt like a machine, right? And, mm-hmm. to, and then, like, the whole system of, like, like identifying with a personality and knowing that, because Jeff likes this game for this reason, it's unquestionable that I'll also like it for that reason. Sure. Because I can identify it. Mm. It's just... Yeah, great. it seemed... It's one of those things that, like, yeah. it seemed like it would work eventually if we stuck with it and, and got yeah. enough of our opinions out there. Eventually it would make sense for exactly, everybody. Exactly. Like, okay, well, he, he hates these games that I love, so when he says he hates it, I'll probably like it. So yeah. that's fine, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? it just having someone that you know that, like, their opinion is genuine and that you can relate to it regardless of whether you have the same opinion or not. Sure. Yeah, so, no, thanks. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. Great awesome. ride. Yeah, good to see you. Right. Yeah. Hey, Jacob. Hi. Hey. How you doing? All right. Good. I met Dave Lang at the Game Awards. Oh, what a, a bummer. He actually put me in a headlock. He of says, course. do you want nice or do you want not nice? So yeah. I had a question for him and I got so nervous that I just block him out. So yeah. I just want to say thank you. Oh, thanks. I've been a subscriber since day one. Cool, I've been listening to you for a while. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah. I don't watch every video you put out. Mm. Um, I don't but, either. <laughs> but I listen to the podcast. I'm a little behind, but I just want to say thank you. Cool. I wonder if I can get a picture of Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cool, I thanks really a lot. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for coming.
I just hey. want to thank you for coming to Texas. Oh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been cool. So. Everyone, you know, in here, we don't necessarily get to go to all the other ones. So, right. Like, I guess probably the past couple years, I'm trying to, like, save money, they either go to Prime or East or something like that. And found out there was one here. Yeah, it's like, great, it's, awesome, perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's, wow. And then you guys weren't sure if you were coming, but, you know, an abbreviated time bomb is better than no time bomb. So I do really appreciate you guys being here. Meaning y'all have actually had probably gotten more out of it meeting cool. you awesome. and yeah. Drake and Wang and Dan and everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hey. Jeff, how you doing? Fun to meet you. Love the podcast on the website. I've been listening for a while. Cool. Um, you guys are actually the reason I came to PAX I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Oh, great. Thanks. I was, uh, I'm in some situation where the gentleman that spoke to you that started his own business, you know, mm -hmm. your podcast really helped me through a lot of times and I really thank you guys for that. Oh, great. Thank uh, you. The laugh and, you know, talk about the hobbies that really helped me a lot. I was wondering, um, you know, as you built this sort of brand, uh, you know, starting off just to do the, the, PA, uh, the public acts and stuff that you were yeah. talking about, to this point where, you know, you can get hundreds of people just to come watch and ask you a bunch of questions. Yeah. How does that feel? It's cool. It's weird. I don't know. It, it's, it's the sort of thing, like, you can't take it for granted. Like, I never know coming to any of this stuff if people are going to show up. You know, because like for stories, like you never know. Like, is there going to be enough people that packs Texas to, to care, or, or you know, or are we going to go back to Boston and everyone's going to say like, I already saw those assholes. Like, I'm not going to go back and see it again. You know, so it's you know, I try not to take any of it for granted because it's you know it's hard to build that stuff. And it's been it's been great. You know, to just kind of be able to get out and just meet people. So it's why I like coming to PAX is just to kind of just hang out. Like, like I'm not out there seeing games and, and shooting interviews. Like we're just here to do the panels and just just hang out and talk to people so, yeah, so it's been you guys cool. built a really unique brand and, uh, only one on the internet really <laughs> yeah. I was also wondering can I take a picture yeah sure oh if you could please thanks a lot yeah thanks a lot yeah I last time yeah sure hang on Oh, it would help, you know. You take a picture of those guys. That's cool yeah. too. <laughs> I just wanted to really make sure that technology. God damn it! There we go. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Are you coming tonight? I think so. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Um. So I guess I just said a few short questions, kind of like. So this has been a different convention experience for y'all because you're not doing. You're not doing stuff for the website, really. I guess I should right. say. So. Do you think that will like? Do you think y'all will come back next year and do that as well? Just like we're gonna come to the convention I, and have this be a refresher. Like we're gonna do it and we're gonna go film the things that show up because next year will be more. Yeah, like out, probably, it'll I probably be a little more fleshed out. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, you know, like the thing that happened to the other PAXs is they got so big and so busy you can't really get a camera on the show floor. Yeah. Like the indie mega booth and stuff is just wall to wall people. So like we used to be able to just be like we're gonna walk through and talk to people. You just can't do yeah. that anymore. So like we've been doing less and less of the other PAXs too. Uh, but we still like you know getting out and doing the panels and, and doing that stuff is is good. Like we enjoy doing it and people like it. So like yeah, we'll probably keep coming. Like uh, the, the only other pack experience I had was eleven. It was where I mm -hmm. first ran to y'all. I was like giant bomb. What's that? I went to y'all's panel. That was the first time. I was like, oh okay. Cool. That, was, you know, <laughs> so that was weird. Uh, yeah. But um, it's this was a pack where you could you could do everything on the floor as an attendee if you wanted to. Right. Because you had three days. And yeah. Yeah. And the lines were not long. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I guess the second thing is with, uh, I guess with Patrick leaving to a more news-focused website, yeah. and you looking to hire someone else for news, are you looking to do more news, less news than with Patrick, or like maintain features like Patrick? It's, did? Like, it's, it's a multi-tiered approach is kind of how I go yeah. about it, is like I want to do more kind of columns and op-ed type stuff, whether it's like getting people who are working in games to kind of comment on, you know, issues that's, that are around them. Um, or, you know, other kind of writers and stuff like that. Uh, then there's, like, the kind of mid-tier mid stories that are, you know, like, worth saying something about that are just about a piece of news. And then there's, like, that one-line type of stuff. One just yeah. like, yep, I, everyone saw that on Reddit. We don't, there's no, there's, yeah, there's exactly. nothing for us to add to this. It, totally. It it's happens. just like, here, this happened. Like, yep. Yeah, literally. Like, this happened. This game got announced. No details are available. Yep. Done. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. not write, like, three paragraphs about, like, well, the past game they worked on was <laughs> it, you know, and have to fill in the blanks there. Yeah. So, like, the people that read our site are like generally pretty savvy so like we don't need to hold their hand and and so we i want to build something that, that respects their time when that's it comes to news so cool thanks yeah it's it, i just want to build something that's smart for those people. exactly yeah you know yeah and 
you know, at some point you're just competing with the rest of the internet, the internet with that stuff, and why bother? Yeah. So, so I want to try to build something smart. We'll see how it works. I don't know, but it's been that's been the thing I've been thinking about for the past few years is like, what's the right way to actually do news? Uh, so it's it's that's that's more or less what we want to do. I guess uh, the new hire will put y'all at nine. Eight, It'll be three out there and one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Uh, eight, eight, uh, nine. Rory. Eight, eight, eight at the end of the year. So. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, we're we're, we're doing okay. We're, we're we're getting close to the number we had because you know before we got bought we were able to pull like Joey and just like the yeah. people that were doing video for the other whiskey sites we were able to pull them in. So when we came over and didn't have them anymore, uh, it was really hard to get anything done because there was no backup. So, I guess that that's another thing about y'all's site is y'all have a interesting ratio. You have three three people who do video and film yeah. and you have the rest of y'all who participate in that in the podcast I guess currently don't have a, a dedicated writer I guess you know that's right yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's yeah we're you know the tech stuff is the, is is definitely a part of it. Like I kind of always view it as like three three parts, like the the audio stuff, the video stuff, and the text stuff, and just making sure we're like e- like distributed appropriately for what people want uh, across those changing, things. So yeah. so yeah, totally. So you know, it'd probably be smarter for us to do more podcasts than to like review every single game in the world or something. You know, just with the with how we're kind of distributed now. But you know, that changes all the time. It's all right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, hey, I'm Adam. Nice to meet you again, hey, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I say again because it's funny. I was introduced to y'all in 2012 on my buddy. Mm. And E3 2011, I somehow got in a Microsoft press conference for my... Oh, okay. I wrote for my LSU's newspaper. Wow. And uh, we talked a little bit. I didn't know who you were. Mm. And then once I was like, <laughs> I know that motherfucker. I'm that part of the press Now I know who he is. John Bomb. Yeah. And I've been in love with y'all ever since. So cool. Thank you. I'd like to share that story again. But it's my favorite story to tell when I introduce people to John Bomb. So. Yeah. Oh, you mind if I get a picture? No, not at all. I was a Fox guy uh, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Friday. Yeah. So, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, thanks. Safe travels back to San Francisco. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Good yeah. to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Aaron. Nice to meet you. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so, one of my favorite things about uh, Site 4 uh, was on TNT, how you uh, and you still sometimes do on uh, on Financial Fridays, uh, do stuff to interact with the community. Yeah. Uh, and one of the most fun I ever uh, had was when I actually got to play TF2 on uh, TNT. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously, not, uh, do they have, do you have plans to either focus more on that stuff in uh, Financial Fridays or have some something like that? Uh, we we want to do a free live show at some point. We want to get back to doing another live show at some point this year. Um, I'm not sure what it'll be yet. It, it's it's not that it's one show. It's more like it's six shows that rotate in and out depending on you know week to week. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we want to do more stuff like that. I want to do like a call in show, like you know, okay. like that sort of stuff where we're you know we're just taking advantage of it being live better than we do now. You know, uh, by just interacting with people more. So yeah, okay. Can I take a picture? No, no. Okay. Yes, please. No problem. Just leave this flat down. Sorry, this bad one. Oh wait. Oh, oh, the, oh, the, oh, yeah, I had it wrong. Sorry oh. about that. <laughs> no, just take a picture of yourself. Just do that. Seriously, does the autofocus like mess up or something? Uh, just tap, just tap on one of our faces, and it'll do it. Get it? Okay, good. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, thanks. Oh, thanks for coming out of PAXA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Okay, mine's just quick and done. Hello. Hi, again, (laughs) sorry. Um, I loved... (laughs) No, I'm not going to yell at it. (laughs) Okay, all right. (laughs) Sorry. Um, I really loved the Crunchyroll ads that you guys did on the podcast. Yeah, they were great and hilarious. And I was just wondering if that was successful for you guys. It seems like it. They, They came back. Which I usually take to mean that they were okay with it. Cool. Um, yeah, it's it's weird because like a lot of other podcasts just read pre-written copy for stuff, and we just kind of don't. And I'm waiting for someone to come back and go, um, you didn't actually do the ad the way that. You did. <laughs> uh, but so far, people have been okay with it, and it seems like the responses have been good. So it's been 
Seems like it's working. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I have to either always talk about anime or pinball, so yeah, there I'm done. Yeah, okay. And <laughs> thanks for coming down again. Yep. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, good to see you. Hey, Jeff. Hey. I'm just here because I get off on taking pictures of people with their favorite podcasters, so I'm good. No, All right. um, yeah, cool. Uh, you know, man, um, I, yeah, I said hi the other day, and um, I don't want to fucking corner you just ask about job advice because it seems like that's like 80% of the questions you get at every one of these live panels. Um, but I did ask Alex yesterday, or Friday, because I was curious. Uh, I, okay, I foolishly applied when you guys did the search for what ended up being Dan Reichert's job. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, clearly out of my league, but I want to fix that. And, um, you know, I already started writing from gaming website. I'm pumping out my articles and getting them out there. But it's like, what what can actually, like, blow your minds if I get it on my resume next time you guys are doing that sort of thing? I think it depends on what we're looking for every time, you know. Right. Like, in the case of someone like Reichert, we were specifically looking for someone that could do more quick looks. Right. And Game Informer was already... The, Game Informer was actually the one publication that reached out and said, hey, we're going to start doing quick looks. Uh, whereas everyone else just started doing them. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so, you know, when he was interested in, in making a move, it was like, okay, well, I already know he can do the exact type of content that we need. Uh, so it was, it was a case where, like, it, the hole was very specific. So, like, a lot of people apply. They're like, you know, there'd be a lot of people that would be really great to work with. And I hope to work with all of them someday. Uh, <laughs> but in that specific case, it was just like, literally, we need more quick look power tomorrow. Gotcha. And, and so, like... He filled that role and then some. So, so what do you think it would be best? Just sort of cast a wide net, try to get as much done of everything as a I can? A little bit. Like, it, you know, it, it doesn't hurt. Like, you know, if you knew how to edit a little bit of video and could cut a podcast and yeah. stuff like that, like, those which are I, things which that... Which I've done. I do music podcasts. Right. So, yeah. like, that's the sort of stuff where, like, you know, hey, I know I know how to make your podcast sound better or something like that. Like, so like I don't know anything about compression. We run the podcast through Levelator. It's the most generic thing in the world, but it seems to work okay. Uh, I wish I knew more about better compression and that sort of stuff. So, like, like those sorts of things, like, are real nuts and bolts type stuff that, you know, if everything else is equal, like, you knowing some of that back-end stuff might make right. the difference. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, knowing a little bit of everything can help for a lot of positions, but there are going to be some cases, like this news job, like, I need someone who has assigned news to freelancers before and managed them and all that sort of stuff. It's like, it's hard experience to get. And it's a hard position to hire for because there are basically like four people that have the experience and that none of them are available. Yeah, so. uh, Patrick, uh, hearing that he was retiring from Giant Bomb definitely gave me a kick in the ass. It's like, man, I gotta fucking take this stuff seriously. Um, <laughs> but uh, just, I guess, one more question for you. I did see on that job description for the news editor site, um, about freelancers, like their job is to be in contact with freelancers. So, you guys, are you guys going to be looking for freelance work in the near future? Well, is that something I'd want to contact whoever you hire? Yeah, that, that's it's. I mean, ideally, that per person's going to know some people they want to use uh, right. to get started. But yeah, the, the eventual idea is we want to have like a, team, a small team of stringers doing some freelance stuff for us here and there uh, for some of that news. Um, and and. We still have to kind of figure out what form that stuff's going to take and, and what shape it's going to take because it's we've done freelance news before and it never worked out right. So I want to try to get it right this time, um, and that can be difficult. So it, it's something where we need to find the person first and then start building around that. Uh, so it's it's yeah. I, ideally, we'll be looking for some freelancers later this year. All right, cool, but yeah. Um, thanks for being patient and waiting to talk to all of us. That's really nice of you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Love the podcast. By the way. Hey. hey, Jeff. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Pretty good. Cool. Is it uh, hard to get up, realize all these crazy people are uh, interested in <laughs> no, hearing what you have to it's, say? No, it's, it's, uh, it's, fun. it's fun. It's flattering that yeah. you know, people would even show up to, to something like this. So, yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the craziest thing is we, uh, honestly, if you guys weren't here, we were going to be disappointed. Mm. Oh. Because this is our first PAX. Yeah. And trying, we always never can get get up there yeah and, yeah uh, it's crazy but the podcast has just roped us in it's awesome thank that, you that, yeah, that's, that's cool. such good news when you can talk about doing more podcasting and how much you enjoy doing it yeah it's just one of those things you know like this at some point it's a numbers game of more and more people have internet in their cars whether it's on their via their phone or some creepy in-car wi-fi yeah. or whatever so like just the number of people that can do a pod they can listen to a podcast because right. uh, my wife and i we both she's the one that asked the uh Pepsi and Coke. Oh, yeah, yeah. And 
we can both listen while we're working. We both have jobs. Right? Yeah, totally. And so, like that's the other use case. It's yeah. like like commuters, yeah. people with the, the kind of desk job type stuff, yeah. or, or they're out in the field. They can kind of listen to whatever. Yeah. 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 Like I go back and because probably like we're post Ryan mm. people, so we've gone. You know, I knew of. I became huge fans. It seemed to be. I don't even know how it happened, but it was towards the end of 2013. Yeah. And so now I go back and start listening to the old stuff, and it's cool. And it's it's, it's great. It's, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. But nobody else has managed to pull it off. You know, you talk about the kind of funny guys, mm -hmm. and they they're good. And like we went, you know, we're in Utah, so we drove down to Vegas for the oh, PlayStation. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah. And we tell how people, was that? We're, I was if they do another one, I think we'll probably go. But I don't know. Um, so that one was smaller than this. Yeah. But everything is is bunched together. I mean, I thought it. I had a hard time finding out where panels were by the time it came around. Yeah. But other than the order, because right, yeah. it's a thirty minute demo. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and so that's the first convention that we've ever been at. You know, but we were so close, had friends down there, and so it was perfect. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's they had you know they had a lot of indie stuff and then a lot of you know the big stuff there. Right. Um, yeah. But it was we thought it was great. You know they had. So it's a lot smaller, so it's easy. Like, is there everything like but you the get order? Get around and see everything. Everything but the order was because you, you sit there for three hours. Right. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. Uh, but they had a lot of stuff that's not out yet, and they had stuff that just came out that yeah. people were able to play. So. Cool. We really enjoyed it. We'd probably go down again. Yeah. Um, it seems like they're going to do it again. It's, it seems, yeah, it seems like it was probably uh, successful. I, I don't know. I wonder if they'll keep it in Vegas or if they'll do something else. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. But. Yeah, it seemed like it'd be good something to move, move around the country. Yeah, maybe. Kind of like what Pat's doing, keep adding more. But right, yeah. they're so close to Vegas, so you just yeah. you don't know if, which way they go about yeah. All right, well, thanks cool. for the time. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming out. Yeah. 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 That's a super big thing. Yeah. I have a friend that's a super huge giant bomb fan, and uh -huh. he gets come. It take like a five second video saying, hey, Steven, or what's up, Steven, yeah. or something like that. All right. Yeah, freak sure. out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be awesome. If you, point, you point at me when you want me to start talking. All right. Steven, you should have come out. What are you doing? This is stupid. You should have come. You should have come. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thanks for the panel, man. You like Texas so far? Yeah, it's been good. It's been right. good so far. Yeah, I like the suit a lot. Yeah, cool. All right, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Oh, man. Now I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eating and drinking. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I told Dave, I, I wasn't surprised that he did a good job. I was surprised he chose to do a good job. Yep. <laughs> uh, that he didn't... He made a strong choice. Well, because yeah, we were talking, he was like, yeah, I'm honestly just going to ask Alan one question. If there's a Texas box. And then I was like, I mean, okay. All right, that's one, one way to go. But yeah, then he has, like, legit stuff. That's yeah. good luck. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to turn this off. Okay. I, I, didn't I, didn't actually mean to I told him he should curate the questions and be like, no, you don't get to ask that. Right. And just do that because no one, I've never seen that. I thought it'd be funny if he said, no, you don't get to ask that, but I have a question and then immediately oh, ask the I, same yeah, question. Yeah. But I was like, because that's the worst part of Q&A is Q&A. It's, yeah. I don't know. It, it, I, I mean, I've been, like, look, it can be I've been good. waiting for a while to get your hot take on like what's next for Tony Hawk. Like, yeah. The, the man in general. Like, no, what's next for Tony Hawk? No, insight. no. Yeah. Well, uh, What's next for Tony Hawk? I mean, so I'll save it for the next panel. You okay. don't need to get well, okay. into it. I mean, he's got a satellite radio station. It's very big. Oh, good, good, Faction. Good, good for him. Um, it's very big. I do know that he just went to uh, my friend's restaurant in San Francisco and clogged the toilet. Wow. Uh, so he was, he was pretty stoked. Wow. Yeah, Tony Hawk, that's a good that's a good get yeah. for your restaurant. Yeah. I'm literally actually going to turn this off now. Oh, All right. I, okay. see you, everybody. Oh, oh, geez.